This is Augustana Sports Scene, a weekly update on Viking athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Enjoy the action and excitement of NCAA Division II athletics at Augustana. Welcome to Augustana Sports Scene. On this week's show, we'll have the Augustana Sports Update. We'll visit with football coach Mike Aldrich and volleyball coach Ashley Buckley. In our Augustana Sports Focus, we'll catch up with women's soccer coach Brandon Barkas, and we'll get you updated with our Augustana Sports Calendar. So let's get going. Here comes Augustana Sports Update for this week. Augie Sports Update is brought to you by Shonemans. Last weekend was a great one for Coach Brandon Barkas' Augustana women's soccer team. The Vikings picked up two home victories as they edged Nebraska Kearney 2-1 and rolled over Minnesota Crookston 3-0. In the win over Kearney, Marin Worth and Jesse Huff kicked in goals for the Augustana ladies. Huff and Kate Timmons added assists for the Vikings and goalkeeper Amanda Wagner made six saves. In the Crookston game, Alicia Olerking, Peyton Pry, and Kate Simmons connected on goals for Augustana. Prior to the game, Augustana alumni Kent and Judy Morstead were recognized for their generous gift to name the Vikings' beautiful on-campus soccer facility, Morstead Field. In volleyball, Coach Ashley Buckley's team improved their record to 6-2 and two on the season as they picked up four victories at the MSU Moorhead Classic. In Friday action, the Vikings knocked off Minnesota Crookston and Minot State, both by scores of 3-0. In the Crookston match, Holly Halfmeyer led the team with eight kills, while Kayla Walrick tallied 26 assists and 14 digs. Christine Bielski added 13 digs for the Vikings. In the Minot State match, Jordan Spatanka led the way with 12 kills. On Saturday, Augustana continued their strong play as they defeated St. Cloud State 3-0 and MSU Moorhead 3-1. In the St. Cloud match, Jordan Spatanka paced the Vikings with 14 kills with Christine Bilski picking up 15 digs. In the win over MSU Moorhead, Jordan Spatanka had 15 kills, Lindsey Peterson 13, and Brooke Luco and Holly Halfmeyer 10. Kayla Walrick dished out 47 set assists with Christine Bilski leading the way in digs with 24. In football, coach Mike Aldrich's team came out on the short end of a 30-27 overtime game with Bemidji State at Kirkaby Over Stadium. After the Beavers scored first, the Vikings came back to tally on a 45-yard fumble recovery by Dan O'Keefe. Bemidji kicked a 21-yard field goal to take a 10-7 lead at halftime. Augustana tied the score on a 20-yard third-quarter field goal by Drew Behrens and went up 17-10 on an early fourth-quarter two-yard run by Nate Mahone. But BSU came back for two fourth-quarter touchdowns to take a 24-17 lead. The Vikings came right back after that, however, to force overtime when they scored on a nine-yard pass from Josh Hansen to Sam Holson with under a minute to play. In overtime, a 20-yard run by Nate Mahone set the Vikings up with a first and goal at the Beavers' five-yard line. But Augustana had to settle for a field goal, and when BSU got the ball, they marched in to score to claim the 30-27 win. Josh Hansen completed 23 of 42 passes for 301 yards, with Sam Holson catching six and Noah Huseman five. Defensive leaders were Austin Lukey with 15 tackles and Nick Andres with 14. Andres also added an interception. And in women's golf, coach Peggy Kirby's team won a Labor Day triangular at Baker Crossing Golf Course. Emily Kivdera shot a two over par 73 to capture medalist honors. That's our sports update for this week. When we come back, we'll talk Augustana football with Coach Mike Aldrich. Stay with us. Augustana Sports Scene is brought to you by Sanford Health, improving the human condition. By Shoneman's, your trusted building center since 1888. And by Mid-Continent Communications, part of your community. When I was young, I loved helping my grandfather with projects, from building a birdhouse to odd jobs around the house. We always got our supplies from Shoneman's. I remember the smell of the fresh cut lumber and all the bins full of nails, nuts, and bolts. Today, my projects are a bit bigger and so is Shoneman's selection. I rely on them for everything I need. Shoneman's, in Sioux Falls and Harrisburg. Expert advice, everything you need. You can always do it right with Shoneman's.
The all-new mid-size 2012 Passat with dual-zone automatic climate control, Bluetooth, and scheduled carefree maintenance included. The Passat has more premium standard features than its competitors. That's the power of German engineering. You may have met one, the teachers who challenge, the ones who motivate, the ones who can fire imagination, the ones, in short, that you'll find at Agostana. Now, maybe you don't believe that one college could have so many great professors. And if so, you're in for an education. Agostana. We've gotten on in years. We've got aches, we've got pains, but we haven't gotten old. We've only gotten better. Now, we've got the time to play, and we've still got game. Sanford's doctors keep us hitting that sweet spot, because we've got to give those aches and pains something to complain about. Get stronger, play smarter, return to performance. Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. The Augustana Football Report is brought to you by Sanford Health. Joining me now is Augustana head football coach, Mike Aldrich. Well, Mike, on Saturday afternoon, the Vikings uh, took on Bemidji State. It was uh, a game that uh, the Vikings uh, felt like they could win, but uh, doggone, uh, too many mistakes. Things slipped away from us, and uh, we lost in overtime. Well, it's, uh, it's our second game in a row that we could have won, and, um, but I won't say that we should have won because we've made too many mistakes. And I think this team is still trying to find its personality a little bit. Um, and trying to find its uh, its leadership needs to rise to the top here pretty quick to help us coaches with uh, with the rest of the team as far as clearing up some of these mental mistakes that we keep making. Yeah, well, the game uh, uh, went on and uh, had its bright spots uh, in it for the Vikings, but then there were the mistakes that kind of uh, shot us in the foot. Let's break the game down first. Let's talk about the offense. Well, you know, if, uh, unfortunately, we had to. We spent probably the first quarter and a half trying to reverse a field position game and. Um, our offense was continually starting with the ball inside the 10 yard line. And uh, when you get the ball back in there, I mean, you're just trying to get enough room to punt the ball out. So um, it kept going back and forth for, you know, pretty much the entire first half. And for us to get off the field only down 10 7 with the, with the way our, our field position was, I felt good about that. But, um, you know, we were plagued offensively again here for the second week in a row of just not finishing our drives. We'd get down to the five yard line and we get a uh, false start penalty or we would get a chop block penalty or we get a delay game penalty something something along those lines so uh, we continually um, the best defense that we face all year so far is our is our offense so. <laughs> yeah well it's disappointing and uh, you know the best news is it's a long season you know we're two games in we there's the things that we can correct so that's back to work let's go to defense well, defensively, you know, we played uh, we played the run real well uh, for the most part. You know, the the problem with the defense uh, this week was we were on the field for 19 minutes of the first half, and it was about 95 degrees down the field, and it was hot, and uh, and our guys were getting pretty fatigued, um, cramping started to kind of uh, rear its ugly head there around halftime. So that second half, we were playing. You know, our defense was playing tired, and they were they were kind of getting moved around a little bit. Um, and not so much even that, it's once you start getting hot and tired, then mentally you start to lose some of your focus. So um, any big play, there, there would maybe be, I would say, four big plays in the game offensively for Bemidji, and all four of them was somebody had a bone coverage or, or a breakdown in assignment, and I think a lot of that can be attributed to fatigue. Yeah, yeah. well, again, uh, Bemidji made the plays and won the game, but uh, how about special teams? Special teams uh, was also a, an Achilles heel for us again. I mean, we had a, um, a field goal blocked early, and uh, we had a lot of pressure put on us. I think uh, the referees missed a little bit of uh, some of their jumping over the top on our field goal blocks and got to the point where I, where I actually considered not kicking another field goal the rest of the game. But we had to do that. We had to give uh, Drew Barons a chance to put points on the board for us. And, and uh, second half, we did a good job there. Our kickoff coverage wasn't very good, so we started to squib the ball a little bit. Uh, that helped us. Um, our kick returns uh, were there, and we, we again had a good day on kick returns other than we'd get some penalties, and then that would drive us back. So um, our special teams were definitely not immune to our, uh, to our mental mistakes either. Well, it's good old coaching time, Mike. These are really the times uh, when it's a gut check, and uh, 
uh, you know, you got to put things back together. So what's your plan for your team this week? Well, we talked to them about, uh, you know, the biggest thing is that uh, – our discipline isn't there, and, and the thing we worked hard on the off season and all through fall camp with our SEAL training and everything was discipline. And mm-hmm. once we get out onto the game field, the, the discipline kind of goes out the window. So uh, we got to get our focus back onto that. We got to get back into um, our, our student athletes preparing for a game instead of uh, just allowing the coaches to prep, prepare and then they just show up on game day. So uh, we just got to get back to those guys understanding that there's a responsibility for them too to, to put themselves in position to win a football game. Well, this week it's uh, on the road for the first time out to the University of Mary and Bismarck. What do you expect? Well, Mary, uh, you know, they, they had a great uh, come from behind win their first week against uh, Shattering State, which was a big win for their program. Uh, and then yesterday they got to, they got beat at the la- in the last minute by Southwest State in a, in a uh, looked like a shootout over there in Marshall. So um, we're we're expecting an offense that's going to throw the ball around a lot. Um, they they showed glimpses of that against us last year. Uh, their quarterbacks got more um, experience, so it's uh, it's going to definitely be a, an offensive fireworks show, and it's just going to be a matter of both of our defenses to try to clamp it down. Well, Mike, uh, it's back at it this week, so get the Vikings ready, and good luck at Mary. I appreciate that. The Augustana Volleyball Report is next. We'll be right back. He has what he needs to make it. He has the speed, thanks to Sanford Power. He has Sanford athletic trainers to help avoid injuries. He has Sanford doctors to help him if they happen. But most important, he loves the game. That's no surprise. He has a lot of me in him. Get stronger, play smarter. Return to performance. Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. How do you hold a moment? Keep friends and family close. Witness the passage of time. Replay the glory days. Relive magical nights. Create memories to share. How do you capture a lifetime? One picture at a time. Life Touch. Photography for a lifetime. And now, an amazing discovery from the Better Bundle Bureau. E equals MC squared. Entertainment equals Mid-Continent Communications Duo. Specifically, the $79 Theatre DVR Suite and Midconet Preferred Broadband Bundle. This entertainment equation combines the fastest Midconet Broadband, free HD, on-demand, and over 200 channels, touchdowns, home makeovers, and pampered pooches. The Theatre DVR Suite and Midconet Preferred Broadband Bundle. A formula for fun. The Augustana Volleyball Report is brought to you by Mid-Continent Communications. With me now is Augustana Volleyball Coach Ashley Buckley. Ashley, uh, since the last time we visited, the Vikings are off and rolling here, have played uh, thus far uh, eight matches on the season. We're six and two. Let's back up a little bit. Talk about the Omaha tournament first that you played in uh, a week ago. Uh, we, you know, came out pretty strong in our first match against Southeastern Oklahoma State. Played really well, beat the team in three. I thought offensively we looked great. Um, we have some big players in the front row for us. Our back row was in system. And, you know, when we've got two or three hitters that can continually put the ball away, it makes for a really exciting match, a lot of one-on-one opportunities. So I thought we executed very well. Um, went on to play uh, Arkansas Fort Smith, who is a very good team. They ran a very fast tempo. Um, offense and you know we just couldn't seem to get ourselves into a rhythm had a lot of unforced errors against them and quite frankly they were the better team that evening Um, rallied back the next morning beat Northwestern Missouri State in four and they're a very good team I think that they'll do really well in their conference this year and then ended the uh, tournament with a loss to UNK but uh, 26-24 was our first set so we rallied hard and Again, with all the changes that we've had and all the injuries that we've had, I thought that you know we showed signs of improvement throughout the weekend, definitely understood what we needed to work on going into the second weekend. Well, uh, that first weekend proved to be a little costly. Again, the Vikings had already lost Grace Sanders, and then Danny Haley went down also. Yeah, so this weekend um, when we were up in Moorhead, we had Kayla Walrick step in and set, and she did a phenomenal job with our offense. We thought she did a great job distributing the ball. She's an excellent defender for us, very fast. So. You know, the strengths of having her lead our offense is that she gets to the ball very quickly and right now is making very good decisions. Um, so, you know, it's it's one loss, but the team's rallied hard. They found ways to win this weekend, and 
I was just impressed with their maturity and, and their determination to win. Well, uh, this past weekend, the Vikings played, uh, as Ashley mentioned, up at the MSU Moorhead Tournament. Uh, four matches, four wins for the Vikings. Let's kind of take them in order, Ashley. First, you had uh, Minnesota Crookston. Yep, Minnesota Crookston has a really good outside right now, and uh, we talked a lot about her and how we wanted to defend her. I thought we did a phenomenal job stopping um, her on the outside. Uh, we served them out of system, which was really nice, but they're a much improved team that they're playing well, and so that was a good win for us again, having just a different lineup for two days. I thought that we rallied hard, and, and again, it was just a, a good win for us. Um, our second game, we played Minot State, and again, just we're in control of the whole match. We served them out of system, which is very important for us. Um, our serve receive was in system. Defensively, we were scrappy and offensively dominated the game, so we kept them to low, low scores. Um, St. Cloud, we knew, would be a good team. They obviously played Moorhead very tight the night before. Um, but again, we rallied hard. We were in control of the match. And the most impressive thing was in the third set coming back from a 21-24 deficit. We ra rallied and you know rattled off five points in a row to win the match. And it's just exciting to see the personality of this team really emerge. These guys are fighters. These guys are playing hard. And uh, have a high level of energy too. Mm -hmm. And we saw that against Moorhead, first two right. sets, we were really sharp. Moorhead came alive, they beat us in the serve-receive game in the third and fourth set. Um, but again, offensively, we had enough weapons. Jordan Spatink on the outside was phenomenal. Lindsey Peterson did a great job for us offensively, defensively. Uh, Christine Bielski had 24 digs in the backcourt. So again, just an overall great team effort. Michaela Gallagher on the right side uh, held her own too. So. You know, we came out with a win, and, and that's what we were looking to do this weekend is have a 4 all weekend. Well, it was a phenomenal weekend, only losing one game in those four matches. And the Vikings now jump into uh, NSIC play. Talk about what's ahead. Uh, the NSIC will be as tough as ever. This weekend we play uh, Upper Iowa and Winona. Um, it's going to be a great match. We see Upper Iowa improving by the year. Uh, Winona just beat Duluth this past weekend, so we understand that they – uh, you know, our good serve-receive team, but offensively, they're very balanced, and they, they run a quick tempo offense, very similar to us, where they have a lot of people scoring points for them. So we're going to have, you know, our challenges ahead of us, but uh, we'll take some time early in this week to work on some things from this past weekend and then move forward to Upper Iowa Winona. And, I, you know, I think by the end of the week, we'll feel prepared. We'll feel a little bit more in rhythm having the team together for a couple more days. And uh, we're excited. We're ready to go. And obviously, we feel good coming off of a great weekend. Well, Ashley, good luck as you start the uh, NSIC season. Thank you. Up next, Augie Sports Focus. Stay with us. Here at the Better Bundle Bureau, we wanted to know the science of savings. What we discovered were massive amounts of channels and freebies. Midconet Broadband with the fastest speeds known to man and unlimited local and long distance calling. No contracts, exclusive benefits, and online account management all bundled up for only $99 a month. We've discovered the science of savings. The Theater DVR Trio from Midcontinent Communications. The best bundle on earth. We've gotten on in years. We've got aches. We've got pains. But we haven't gotten old. We've only gotten better. Now, we've got the time to play. And we've still got game. Sanford's doctors keep us hitting that sweet spot. Because we've got to give those aches and pains something to complain about. Get stronger. Play smarter. Return to performance. Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. When I was young, I loved helping my grandfather with projects. From building a birdhouse to odd jobs around the house, we always got our supplies from Shoneman's. I remember the smell of the fresh cut lumber and all the bins full of nails, nuts, and bolts. Today, my projects are a bit bigger and so is Shoneman's selection. I rely on them for everything I need. Shoneman's in Sioux Falls and Harrisburg. Expert advice, everything you need. You can always do it right with Shoneman's. Augie Sports Focus is brought to you by Shoneman's. Joining me now is Augustana women's soccer coach, Brandon Barkas. Brandon, great to have you back on Augustana Sports Scene. Before we start talking about uh, the ladies on our soccer program, we had a uh, great day here yesterday at Augustana as we recognize Kent and Judy Morstead and their family for their outstanding gift to name uh, Morstead Field. Talk a little bit about that excitement. Kent and Judy, you're amazing, amazing. Uh, it was awesome. It was really, really neat. We opened the field two years ago uh, without a namesake, as you know, and uh, then Kent and Judy, a couple 
graduates, recent graduates of Augustana, and they, uh, they uh, yeah, made a huge contribution, and I'll tell you what, it's really going to put soccer over the top now, and uh, it was amazing. We had, and plus, you know, it was a Shriners Day, and so there was a ton of Shriners, and Kent's really involved with that, and, and, and Judy's just an amazing woman, and their whole family was there. It was just really nice, and then the, the energy they brought and, and how positive it was. Uh, was really contagious to the rest of the team, and I'm a big believer in that. You know, you yeah. can get negative, and you have a couple losses, and that's contagious. You get you get some wins, and you get some positive energy, and that's contagious. And yeah. Kent and Judy really kicked it off for us, so that yeah. was awesome. Yeah, great momentum for the day. Well, let's back up, Brandon. Uh, we were uh, four games into the season here. The Vikings started out uh, going over to Minnesota State Mankato. Talk about that one. Tough one. Um, you know, it's uh, they're they're going to be really good. They did a good job of pressing us and and uh, denying us some some attacking opportunities and. You know, uh, we kind of came out a little slow, and uh, it was a tough day. It was a real tough day. Um, we, we, we learned a lot from that game, and I think we've uh, definitely gotten better. And uh, then we turned around, we played Fort Lewis, who was who's sixth in the nation, and uh, we scored on ourselves an own goal in the last minute and a half uh, to lose the game, but we played substantially better, and, and Fort Lewis lost to Grand Valley in the Final Four last year. And they're an awesome team. They got a, they got a girl, uh, Haley, up top, who's just terrific. And, and we did a great job of shutting her down, and and contained in Fort Lewis for the most part. Uh, but we grew, and that was the great thing about it. And then we turned around this last weekend and, and get a, got a couple wins, and that was big for us. Yeah, so, yeah. huge wins. The Vikings yeah. uh, knocking off uh, Nebraska Kearney and then uh, Minnesota Crookston. Okay, Brandon, let's, uh, let's talk about your team. Uh, you know, some of your uh, veteran players, some of the things that you're looking for from your group. Well, I mean, I guess we probably need to start with Kate Timmons, number seven in the back. She's uh, just been amazing. She's played for four years, uh, really has played for four years. You know, her sophomore year, kind of up and down a little bit, but uh, just a great young woman. And her, her, her dad actually was an uh, alum here, a football player. And um, just a real leader. She just does a, a great job. She's fantastic in the air, strong tackler, uh, really good organizer. Uh, and Stacy Daly, number 23 in the midfield. She's a senior. Um, I guess like all the players now in the program, they've kind of gone through trials and tribulations, and um, we've really come a long way. But uh, based on those experiences, Stacy's really stepped up and just been fantastic. Jess Perez, uh, another uh, defensive midfielder, number 11 for us. Uh, again, a, a young woman who had an ACL early in her career, uh, struggled to come back, and um, just has been lights out. I'm really, really proud of Perez. And then uh, Erica Dahl transferred in uh, after her freshman year at Green Bay, Wisconsin, and has been good, and um, and then Raylan Walzak, a, a kid out of Minnesota. Her parents live in uh, New York now, and, and she's been really, really strong. Starting outside back for us, number 14, uh, come in and, and, and starting for us again this year. So, yeah, the senior group is awesome, and they really add a lot of experience and, and leadership, and, and I'll tell you, you know, without strong leadership, you, you can't go that far. And uh, having women that are willing to, you know, step up and, and, and call people out to a certain degree, but at the same time step off the field and then pat each other on the back and say, hey, I, I got your back. And, and we're on the same team and uh, we're doing this to get better. It's, it's been huge. It's been great. And it's really exciting. And I, I, I really foresee, especially after getting these wins, um, developing that more of a winning mentality, which mm -hmm. you know what the history of Augustana soccer hasn't always been great. And, uh, but I, I think we've kind of turned the corner and uh, it's, it's Really exciting. Really well, it's exciting. great to see you scoring some goals here, Brandon. You got some ladies that have stepped up. Talk about them. Oh, man, uh, Martin Worth, um, you know, she had a goal this weekend, and uh, she uh, started about half the games last year when uh, Katie Shander went down with an ACL, and uh, she's been fantastic. Jesse Hoff, who's a junior, uh, number 10 out of uh, uh, Apple Valley, Minnesota, she's just been amazing. You know, you've probably seen the flip throws if you've watched any of the highlights. She does a flip throw, and it's it's really, uh, really pretty spectacular. Um, she's been off the charts. Uh, you know, and then Mackenzie Trom, she scored a goal against Mankato. She scored a goal against Fort Lewis. That was just a rip. And uh, she's been really, really good. Alicia Olerking scored a goal. Tremendous amount of speed. Kid out of Harrisburg, um, you know, South Dakota. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just feel really, really good. And then, of course, we had a surprise uh, kid who scored the third goal in the Crookston game yesterday, uh, Peyton Pry, uh, freshman out of uh, Sioux City, who she's, I think she's going to be special. She's going to be really special. So, yeah, we've been scoring some goals, which... We haven't quite done in years past, so yeah. makes the games more fun. Yeah. Well, what's coming up here, Brandon, uh, for you and uh, looking ahead into the NSIC? Um, well, we uh, we have Northern on Saturday, and and that's going to be a dogfight. And then we we turn on we play Mary at uh, at the Bismarck Community Bowl, mm -hmm. and you never know what to expect there. There's a good chance we get 60 to 70 mile hour gusts of wind, you know, which <laughs> are going to affect the game. But yeah. uh, it, it's it's they're going to be battles and. 
Uh, it's going to be important that we stay disciplined and stick to our game plan and that uh, uh, the ladies really step up and deliver some good leadership with those, those seniors like I was talking about. Uh, and then we just need, uh, we need some good performances and then we need a couple extraordinary performances. And I think when you start to get that, that's when you can start to have those good runs and get to the, the postseason and, and go, go beyond. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about uh, Saturday's game against Northern, which is the most important game up to this point right now for us. So, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting for those that are probably, you know, football fans. I, I kind of compare us a little bit to the Dallas Texans a little bit. You know, they've got a lot of personnel and, and trying to figure out that way to win and, and kind of a newer program. I, I feel like we're similar and we're, we're turning the corner here a little bit. And it's, it's very exciting. Very exciting. Well, Brandon, listen, uh, the season is just getting rolling. A lot of soccer ahead. So good luck to you and the Vikings. Yeah, thanks, Bill. The Augustana Sports Calendar is next. We'll be right back. The all-new mid-size 2012 Passat with dual-zone automatic climate control, Bluetooth, and scheduled carefree maintenance included. The Passat has more premium standard features than its competitors. That's the power of German engineering. I want back in the game. I want to rise above the pain. I want the best ducks to have my back. Sanford Ducks, so I can shatter backboards, shatter records. I want MVP. I want everything. But first, I want back in the game. Get stronger, play smarter. Return to performance. Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. The Augustana Sports Calendar is brought to you by Sanford Health. Let's take a look at the Augustana Sports Calendar for this week. Friday, September 16th, volleyball is on the road for their NSIC opening match at Upper Iowa in Fayette, Iowa. Saturday, September 17th, football hits the road, takes on the University of Mary in Bismarck at 2.30 p.m. Volleyball back on the road again at Winona State. And women's soccer is at Northern State in Aberdeen. Sunday, September 18th, women's golf is at the Husky Classic in St. Cloud. Men's golf is at the Wildwood Invitational in Lake Elmo, Minnesota, and women's soccer finishes their road trip at the University of Mary. Monday, September 19th, women's golf finishes playing the Husky Classic, and men's golf completes their action in the Wildwood Invitational. And remember, for radio coverage of Augustana football, you can hear the Vikings on KIKN FM 100.5, and Saturday's football game at the University of Mary is live on Midco Sports Network. That's it for this week's show. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll join us again at this same time next week for another edition of Augustana Sports Scene. Have a great week, everybody. You've been watching Augustana Sports Scene, a weekly update on NCAA Division II athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Learn more about Augustana College in Sioux Falls at augie.edu.